Hello there. Season one of Modern Warfare 2023 is just about over, and I thought a good old milestone video would do some justice. For the better or for the worse. Today, we're gonna be looking at everything in season one that I deem important to COD multiplayer, because I don't play Warzone, and I haven't quite gotten enough time in Zombies yet to review it. <laughs> multiplayer is also just why I am a fan of this franchise. I still value the other modes, but to get into the meat and potatoes of what season one had to offer, let's kick it off with the maps themselves. We got new maps, 66 and 2v2 maps. Unfortunately, some doggy doo doo maps. Together, these all kind of accumulated into the COD community, calling this the worst season ever. Not gonna lie, not everything was pristine, but I, I think that statement's a little bit far fetched. I don't think this season one even comes close to topping Modern for 2's season one, like as the worst season ever. We at least got new maps, one of which being the best original map in the game. I love it. I'm talking about Greece. This map takes advantage of Modern Warfare 3's unique movement speed, swimming mechanics, and variety of combat ranges. If you want to snipe, go for it. Assault rifle combat, just as viable. Water also provides a good flank route for close quarter combat players and pistol users too. Since the water is along both the outside lanes on this map, and since you can only use pistols underwater, have fun taking advantage of it and picking off those hard scopers underneath the surface. This map may seem large at first, and trust me, it is. <laughs> but due to Modern Warfare 3's fast movement speed, this map plays like Vondel Waterfront from Modern Warfare 2, and that map was a medium to small size. Action is still waiting around most corners. You got enough space to actually control your engagements. This shit ain't your toddler shipment, Rodeo. No spawn traps that literally take skill out of the game. I'm gonna play a little bit of Ring Around the Rosie right here, and oops, nope, going into the water. <laughs> um, dude, this clip was insane in real time. I'm gonna let the rest play out for you guys, but oh, it was so stressful in the moment. Man, I'm so proud of it. We got a number one victory royale. Like, man, this map even looks beautiful. I'd give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. The only downside, in my opinion, is streak coverage. If someone gets an aerial assault streak, you don't have much for cover. On the losing end, you're basically stuck in three tiny houses if you want to stay alive. And that'll unfortunately slow down the gameplay. But next up, I'd like to talk about Rio. This one resembles more of a, a three-lane map with a bit more complexity in each main spawn. However, while this map looks super clean, arguably it feels very rushed. I do like the layout of certain sections. The elevation changes are really good and fun, but there's also some areas that feel underdeveloped. For example, the marketplace, it has one hot dog stand and barely any cover. The named areas on this map were very poorly labeled as well. For a market, this is pretty bad. I feel like there should be at least a few more table vendors here and there. Then there's also the garage, and this is the garage, and so is this area. L like, no, I'm clearly not in the garage, guys. Same story for the trolley station. I'm clearly in a clothing shop, but <laughs> okay, no distinction. And again, same thing with the mall. There's no changes if I'm on the north end, the south end, nor the elevated center. I'm just still in the mall. And speaking about the center, this map sucks in domination. Like the grenade spam on this open B flag is so bad. You'd think the center would be pretty balanced out with the elevators on both sides, but if players don't kill you, grenades surely will. Which is a bit strange because not a bloody vehicle on this map can explode. Watch this. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, take two. Um, sorry, uh, mind the previous explosion. And let the dust clear. Yeah, see, nothing. Windows 2, can't be shot out. Incredible. This is what the epitome of unfinished is. But yeah, I don't think it's an awful map, so I'll give it a 6.5 to a 7 out of 10. I think it's a little bit on the small end as well. It probably would have benefited from a slightly bigger mall. <laughs> but hey, that's if you think size matters. And speaking of size, we also got meat. <sighs> Yeah, meat. I made a video partially about this map about a month ago. Go check it out. But TLDR, I, I don't like grind maps. Meat, I'd say, is about the same size equivalent to a map like a DOS house from COD Vanguard. The map is just a little bit too small for controlling engagements. You'll get overrun constantly, and the spawns are just as bad as I pointed out in my shipment video. The only good thing I can say about this map is that the art team did a spectacular job. I love the dreary aesthetic maps used to offer back on the OG MW3, and this map kept 
captures that vibe with updated graphics, color schemes, and a very clean environment. <laughs> this liner is also pretty cute. Look at this little baconator just ready to be eaten. <laughs> I'd give this map a 5 out of 10. It's the best tiny sized map we've had out of COD. It's not like pure cancer, but it's like smoking a cigarette, just begging to get the poison only shipment can provide. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't play like a classic MW3 experience, so that's why I rate it so low. For those that weren't around for the OG MW3, the smallest base game map was Dome. <laughs> yeah, boy has the Kai community changed for the worst. <laughs> they call meat a small sized map now. Oh, that's how devolved we've gotten. Uh, but uh, moving on, that's it for the new maps. The rest we got were all reskins. Let's talk about that. Reskins. What are they? Why are they? Where are they? Good questions, wouldn't I like to know? <laughs> yeah, so we used to have this map called Hangover High Rise in the game, alongside Ship Miss Shipment. But who cares about that map? That's a 0 out of 10. Instantly wouldn't recommend. Hangover High Rise, though, it's a reskinned map of remastered High Rise. AKA it got a Christmas themed makeover. The time of day went from sunset to night with pretty lights everywhere. There was music and snow too. It's a fantastic reskin for the event. I think it's actually much better than the actual map. But where did it go? So COD's been doing this thing over the past five or so years where they release a map variant for Christmas, it stays for a few weeks, and then it disappears for good, never to be seen again. There's like a 100% chance we won't be seeing these two Christmas themed maps ever again because I feel like they just would have re-released last year Christmas shipment in MW3 instead of making a new one of the same map, but no, they they didn't. It's just so dumb, man. I just don't understand this limited time bull squat. Hangover High Rise honestly improves a 7 out of 10 bland sunset high rise into an 8.5 pretty as fuck high rise. I, I miss the limited time snowball fight mode on these maps too. In this mode, you don't have guns, you got one life, and you go around the map picking up snowballs to throw at the opposing team. There's splash damage, no melee combat this year. This mode was actually from Modern Warfare 2019's Christmas Docks snowball fight, but melee combat was on that year and it kind of ruined the mode. I'm glad they fixed it for this year. <laughs> There's also a yellow snowball that deals bonus damage. <laughs> but again, it is gone for good because it was a limited time mode. Honestly, I, I I just can't stand LTMs in a game that I'm already paying $90 for. How the frick do you expect people to pay that kind of money to get promised content removed after two weeks? Like, what was the point? Why couldn't they add derail and sub base to the snowball fight maps rotation and make this a permanent party mode? Just stop creating this FOMO garbage. Fear of missing out does not make the game more fun. It actually ruins it afterwards. I really miss this stuff we had during Christmas, but you you know what I don't miss? More reskin maps that don't belong in COD multiplayer in the first place! Thank you, thank you very much! So for every Call of Duty season there is a launch update and then halfway through we have a mid-season update called the Reloaded update. This one ended up giving us three zombies themed map variants. Quarry became a hellscape with these lava blocks everywhere. Scrapyard got this Cold War die machine makeover where you enter the dark aether and there's just these jellyfish things flying in the distance. And then lastly there's rest. It's kind of a steampunky map with some neon lights everywhere, I guess. It's not my personal cup of tea, but what pisses me off the most about these maps is that they weren't put into zombies. Instead, we gotta play these maps in multiplayer on this mode called the Vortex. It's basically free-for-all, one person spawns in with a one-shot, one-kill ray gun, and if you end up killing that person, you get the ray gun yourself, like it's a game of tag. And that's about it. Basically, what I learned from playing this mode is that tiny maps absolutely suck balls in this game. Spawns in free-for-all are too close to the enemies in. And even Scrapyard had this glitchy spawn where you're placed behind an invisible barrier. I actually found out you could crawl to get yourself out of there, but other people figured out going prone puts you underneath the map. So this doubles down as an exploit as well. And the ray gun, while well, it does one shot, one kill, most of the time it is just not worth going for. I'm pretty sure the bullet travel time on the thing was just really slow, so it's easy to miss shots. So aka the, <laughs> the point of playing this mode is not there. Non-existent. Why would I want to use a meh gun when I can use any weapon in the game that's a hundred times more forgiving? Oh yeah, and the reason that I'm pretty sure the ray gun had slower bullet travel time is because it was a limited time mode too. I can't go back and check it for myself because they removed it a few weeks ago. Hoorah! Don't you just love live service games that don't improve the game over time? It's just so good knowing the devs will take away content because that's totally what we want. And it doesn't stop there, guys. Uh... 
Uh, the next season releasing tomorrow is a zombies themed season. And guess what? We're getting more zombies themed map variants, but not in zombies. No, no, no. Only in multiplayer. Zombies itself is getting no new content to play on. Those devious devils. And there was also an announcement saying that these previously introduced vortex maps are returning. Again, in the vortex mode. Most likely for another limited time event, because why else will they be coming in the mid season update? It's just so sickening, dude. I gave these maps a 2 out of 10. Good effort, I guess. They look neat, but they aren't new, and how do you make a Call of Duty with a Zombies mode and not put in anything remotely similar to classic Zombies? Onslaught was a great mode from Black Ops Cold War. It was introduced three years ago, and at this point, I could only see it being improved with MW3 Zombies. If only it was in MW3. For those that missed out on Onslaught because it was a PlayStation exclusive mode for a single year, this mode was about putting the player into multiplayer maps, forcing you to follow this orb and stay inside a small storm collapse bubble while you defeat waves of hordes. If this was in MW3, you'd instantly be making the mode much better as the multiplayer maps now look like they're from zombies. Sure, the purple storm collapse did that job back then, but in MW3, you'd have maps that distinctly look different from multiplayer versions. They could even have their own Easter eggs and new areas, kind of like how Vanguard did that on Red Star. Plus, they could innovate past Onslaught and just make these multiplayer maps into new classic zombie maps with doors to unlock and windows to barricade, but Onslaught has been requested for a long time, so I'm not fully certain as to why Onslaught isn't here yet, other than short dev time. I don't know. I guess here's to hoping it comes out later this year. Anyways, there was also a seasonal cutscene for Season 1. In the past, they used to tie these new maps into these cutscenes to really make the season come together as one united narrative. This season, however, starts off with the campaign character Nolan breaking out of confinement. First of all, that's dumb. We just captured him in the campaign. Since we were hot on Makarov's trail, he just used Nolan as bait. Nolan accepted these terms and now he's out again. Like, I guess sure we couldn't get any info out of him, but then why did we let him go so effortlessly off screen? Like, dude, I don't want to rant about this until my campaign review comes out. <laughs> don't worry, it is coming out soon. But god, I am just so sick of this dumb, loosely told story with zero stakes at hand. The last thing I'll say is that if Price thinks taking down his own general is worth the effort for the sake of revenge against Makarov, why wouldn't he have also killed Nolan? Why was it General Shepard when Makarov was the reason Price broke as a human being? He's not breaking bad, he's going stupid. Have these narrative directors not heard of the saying, show don't tell? Because all they've been doing this year has been throwing darts at a wall and hoping they stick. They aren't drawing lines between plot points. They aren't giving us a satisfying cause and effect. Where's the foreshadowing? It's such a bloody mess. This whole seasonal cutscene is a bloody mess. I mean, like, it's supposed to be a campaign cutscene, and it's just filled to the brim with these special effects galore. What they are doing is telling us events that happen without a transition or explaining how or why. So yeah, this is a go fuck yourself sort of seasonal cutscene. Zero effort gets a big fat negative 10 out of 10 from me. They are literally out to sabotage the Modern Warfare series. It's not a, oh well, just pick up your bootstraps and make it better next time. No, the, the the damage is done. They've already ruined it. And on an even lower note, we had a bunch of COD devs fired recently. 1,900 at the very least. This was across most of COD dev studios. Sledgehammer Games, the current lead devs on Modern Warfare 3, lost 30% of their staff. Obviously, this is worrisome for the future of Modern Warfare 3. It's only been two months since MW3 came out, and well, the devs were also sent home for Christmas holidays for over two weeks. The amount of development this game has already gotten it was so short, so I don't even know what the future seasons are gonna have. Honestly, it'll probably just be almost map variants and other remakes after season two. I would love to be wrong here, but no one knows for sure. Not even me. I really do feel bad for the devs, and I hope anyone that got laid off can get back on their feet soon. Ooh, Scobie's matchmaking also got discussed. I guess that's a kind of a good thing, right? They promised to tell us about three or so weeks after announcing it. Players have been begging for the removal or reduction of how strong skill-based matchmaking is. It got to a point where the devs had to talk about it so that the community would discuss other issues and whatnot. Strangely enough, they waited out their time pretty far past people's expectations. But when all hope seemed lost, they released a blog post of how it works in COD. They got factors like connection, time to match, skill and performance, platform, voice chat, input device, recent maps and modes, and lastly, playlist diversity. Which is kinda neat, I guess. The only one that I didn't know prior to this was the input devices. Basically, what that means is that it will try and put you with a controller user if you are using a controller. And by 
vice versa with a mouse and keyboard. I assume it's just randomly mixed lobbies though if you got at least one person in your party with the opposite input device. And some people already try and reduce the other input devices they see manually by turning off crossplay. But in my opinion, you gotta be pretty salty to do that. Especially now that skill-based matchmaking at least tries to get mostly the same input users to pair up with you. I mean, if you're that ego-driven, go for it. But you're just limiting your own player pool at that point from an ocean to a small pond. But yeah, everything else I kind of already knew of. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> not necessarily good, but equally not as bad. As for new weapons and equipment, there were two new streaks and a flamethrower attachment. I did not unlock the flamethrower myself, but it seems like a neat gimmick. I remember it was plaguing the meat map when it first came out, but I think it might have gotten nerfed since then. God, it was pretty hell back then seeing Dragon's Breath shotguns and flamethrowers just wreaking havoc across the map. It was just constant sparks in interior spaces. I guess there was also an interesting EMP launcher. It doesn't do player damage, but I guess it takes out streaks a little bit better. And speaking of streaks, the new streaks were the EMP and the swarm. Unfortunately, the EMP does cost you 13 kills with kill streaks or 1625 score with score streaks, and you only get to call it in once. <laughs> it's pretty pricey for what it actually does. There's also not any way in the game to see what streaks are currently active from the enemy team. I will say that's kind of something that was nice about Zero from Black Ops 4. You could actually at least like see the enemy streaks on the map, the ones you could hack with your tablet. However, the EMP and MW3 does destroy all active streaks, disables the enemy HUD, and it also doesn't allow them to call in any streaks. But uh, unfortunately, this only lasts for 45 seconds. So in my opinion, this is just a very unrewarding and unworthy streak to your loadouts. I think they should rework it and make it cost 9 or 10 kills or 1100 score. The swarm, however, is pretty cool. An armada of bomb drones are just launched overhead, and they fill the sky with this horrifying scream. Currently, it'll cost you 15 kills or 1875 score without dying. This makes it the new high streak in the game, alongside the juggernaut. I did find out that you could outrun these drones by just running in a straight line, hmm. <laughs> Which is pretty darn disappointing given how much effort this streak is required to earn. So yeah, <laughs> everything here was kind of underwhelming. As for the other DLC guns, nothing was really unique or stood out to me, so moving on. The last thing I want to talk about are some cosmetics, including the duck skin and some mastery rewards being resold to us. The duck skin drama was funny as fuck. <laughs> okay, so if you don't know, MW3 has been releasing so many outlandish skins, but for some reason, the duck was apparently what caused Twitter to set itself ablaze. So many people were talking about it, and I think I know why something like this became so controversial over other skins and things like this. By the way, this skin just released at the end of season one. I fucking hate it. Obviously, even something like this is so much worse than the duck skin, but the reason why I think it was so controversial was because the opposing side to the duck skin haters actually had some ammunition to stand on. So many people started using the argument, why are you complaining about the duck skin when there's so many more wild ones in the game? You guys must be disingenuous or crazy Milson fans. This is just straw manning, obviously. Most of the duck skin distaste comes from a long chain of disliked silly skins. People just didn't want to see it, and when the duck skin drama started, these people caught hold and were like, why this skin of all skins? You guys are weird. But yeah, I thought I'd just bring it up because <laughs> it was pretty silly drama. People even got heated. Others couldn't understand why people were complaining when they don't have to buy it. Probably the low IQ crowd or just someone who's very ignorant. It does not take much effort to put two and two together to understand why skins are destroying immersion. And you know what? Everyone values immersion differently, but acting like don't like it, don't buy it, fixes anything is beyond dumb. You're just not worth talking to. And then there's the stuff that actually matters, the mastery camo being resold to us. Hmm, so this was last year's Modern Warfare 2 mastery camo. It was above polyatomic. Its name was Orion. This camo looks almost identical to Orion. Arguably, they kind of made it look a little bit better too. If that's not a biggest F you to your face, I don't know what it is. Players, you guys gotta stand up for yourselves when this happens. The duck skin drama can chill. This right here is destroying progression. It's the higher up saying that they don't care about your playtime at all. This is a video game, guys. Why isn't that their top priority? Is the money from duck skins and other outlandish gods not enough? Like, holy moly. This is bad. This is really bad. Also, before I get, there actually was another map added to MW3. It was just in 2v2, but I thought I'd bring it up now just because, like, even though I'm only covering 6v6 multiplayer, why not cover it since Season 2 is literally bringing a 2v2 map into 6v6 and acting like it's a 6v6 map. Stash House is literally, like, <laughs> the same size as this barn map from Modern Warfare 2019. And that was a 2v2 map back then, too. So this one, it's a training facility. Me, personally, I actually only played it at launch when this came out. Replay mode and a bunch of his fans were hosting a tournament and, well, not really a tournament for any rewards, but we were just playing for fun on the map, mixing up teams and whatnot. It was a lot of fun. I had a blast. The map layout is actually pretty good for 2v2, and the aesthetic looks nice 
nice as well. I guess as a 2v2 map, I'd give it a 8 out of 10. Pretty good, pretty good. I love that you can actually like slide through this little event system from one end to the other. That's satisfying. And that's it. Overall, to conclude season one, I think this season was pretty decent. Not the worst ever. I've actually noticed a growing number of people start calling this the best season we've ever gotten in a live service Call of Duty. I noticed this after making the video, so don't question why I started this video asking, why is this the worst season ever? <laughs> but it's so amusing to me. We went from worst season yet to literally the best season we've ever gotten. And it flip-flops so fast. I do personally beg to differ. We only got two real maps, one that was kind of unfinished, and the rest were grind maps or reskins. None of the weapons were that unique, even though we got three new guns. This game launched with a smaller weapon pool than Modern Warfare 2 did last year. And this game launched with remastered maps only. As far as I'm concerned, the devs are playing catch-up and are probably going to put most of their eggs in the first two seasons baskets. To avoid any doubt, this game is suffering from its short dev time and 30% layoffs. So enjoy MW3 while you still can. I don't think this is going to become a standard whatsoever. And you know what? To put up an argument against this being the best season ever, I think we've seen way better seasons out of Modern Warfare 2019. Season 3, for example, had four maps for 6v6. One was a hard hat remaster with a couple reworked areas, but nothing too notable. Another was a cropped version of a ground war map to play nicely in 6v6. That was a Nia incursion. And the other two were Sawmill and Telsic Backlot. Literally my favorite map in the game. Hot dog, it was so good. I guess Backlot was also a remake, but the change layout really did help improve the map a lot. What I'm trying to say is it got major changes. Oh, and uh, season two of Modern Warfare 2019 was pretty decent. We got Superstore and Hideout for 6v6. There was also the Tiny Rust remake, but the other two maps were bangers. I love them so much. But yeah, I wouldn't say Modern Warfare 3's season one is the best season ever, given the circumstances. Like, guys, come on. If we had a COD release with uh, six 6 v 6 maps, and then season one gave us five new maps, I don't think it would be comparable to other CODs. And six plus five is 11, but other games launched with 11 maps, so why pretend this is a good thing? Obviously, this isn't going to become a standard when another COD releases with 11 new maps at launch. We wouldn't be seeing another five maps in that game season one unless something happens like dropping Warzone. Ooh, that's a cool idea, but it's also pretty unlikely to happen. <laughs> Currently in MW3, we are at 17 6v6 sized maps, and that's honestly great for those that never played the OG MW2 maps like myself. I do feel like other factors are affecting my enjoyment of this game though, but I'll get into that in another video. Perhaps a Rainbow Six Siege video. Mm. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on season one in the comments below. Give me your reviews. I'd love to read and respond to every single one of them. And uh, while you're down there, smash the like button and subscribe. I hope you like the VTuber model. I know this kind of came out of nowhere, but this thing was supposed to be ready for the start of Modern Warfare 3 and it just wasn't. There's still some tweaks and changes that I need to happen to it as well. Like for, for example, the mouth, when I go from neutral to a smile, like this is what happens. So from neutral to a smile. Did you catch that? It's just not like a smooth transition. It goes from like a, a neutral face to a squiggly face, then to a smile, but it should be going from like a, a neutral face to a partial smile, then to like a really big smile. So yeah, dude, I've been making really funny faces throughout this video to get that big smile in. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you like her because she's here to stay. I don't know if I'm going to call her Matsuki yet, but that's kind of the name I have going on right now. She's just kind of the gender swapped Matsuki, I guess you could say. But yeah, how about, how about that? You just leave a name in the comments as well if you want. <laughs> to recommend. But yeah, here's to hoping season two gets better. Peace out, homies. The duck skin drama was funny as fuck. <laughs>